Have you ever wondered why some people are so much more successful than others and why it is that they get to have and enjoy everything that they desire? Have you ever wondered that? You know, and have you ever wondered why some people are just not as successful as them? You know, what is it that you have to do in order to have and enjoy everything that you want and desire in life? If you've ever wondered that or if you'd like to know the simple, I'm going to give you the simple solution. Join me this week for Wednesday Wisdom and Leadership. Your boy, Ernie Davis, a.k.a. The People's Coach. Let's do it. You know what? I'm out here sitting on the banks of the water down at the National Harbor in Washington, D.C. Look, I'll do a quick 360 because I want you to see that it's beautiful out here. It's a beautiful day. Man, it's beautiful. But, hey, it's Wednesday, right? So this Wednesday, I want to ask you a question. I want to ask you. What is it that you want? I want to ask you that. What is it that you want? You know, and I'm asking you, I'm not asking you that. This is intentional. You know, last week, you know, we talked about you and discovering who it is that you are as a person, discovering what your purpose is in life, you know, and growing to fulfill your purpose. And, you know, before you can do that, we said that before you can really do that, you have to discover who you are as a person, you know. And after you discover who you are as a person, one of the next things you have to do, and this is, this, one of the next things you have to do is, is you have to figure out what it is that you want. You know, and I know that sounds easy. It sounds easy. You know, I'm going to ask you what you want, and you're going to tell me, but I'll tell you I've been doing this for a long time, a long time. You know, there's, there's a saying out there that said, you tell me what it is that you want, and I can tell you how to get there. I can tell you how to get it. But here's the problem, right? Here, here's the problem. Most people don't have a clue. They don't know what it is that they want. You know, Napoleon Hill in the book, Think and Grow Rich, and you know, you guys know that I love that book. I love Think and Grow Rich, but in the book, Think and Grow Rich, he says that 98% of people, 98%, that's, that's 98 out of 100, 98 out of 100 people, they don't know what they want. You know, it's one of the first questions I'd like to ask anybody before we sit down and generate a plan to figure out where we're going to go. We have to figure out where we're trying to get to. What is it that you want? Most people don't know. Most people, they want whatever somebody else told them that they want. That's what, they, that's what they're looking for. They're looking for what other, what other people want. They know what other people want. They know what other people want to wear, what other people want to be. They know what other people told them to be, what other people told them that they should be. But they don't know who they want to be. They don't know what they want. They don't know what they want to do with their life. I want that to be different for you. I want that to be different for you. I want, I want to challenge you right now to rip out a piece of paper. And I want you to write that down. I want you to think about it. At the top of the paper, listen, I want you to write it down. Write it, write it down. What do I desire to be, do, and achieve? What do I desire to be, do, and achieve in life? What do I want? What do I really want? And then after you write that down, here's the next thing that you're really going to want to do. Because last week we talked about discovering your natural gifts, talents, and abilities. Right. And if you remember correctly, I, I said something like I said something to the effect that, you know, God has instilled you with certain gifts, talents and abilities. He's given you an ability to do certain things to get what it is that you want and achieve happiness in life. So write down what it is that you want and then write down your natural gifts, talents and abilities. And if you don't really know what your gifts, talents and abilities, you're still trying to figure that whole thing out. You're still trying to figure out what your natural gifts, talents and abilities are. Listen, you know, one of the things that I do is I do this Myers-Briggs. I'm a Myers-Briggs practitioner. Yeah, I, I do Myers-Briggs. It's, it's, it's one of the most awesome tools and resources that I've ever used. It's the My Myers-Briggs personality assessment. And one of the things I love about the My Myers-Briggs personality assessment is that it helps you to discover you. It's built off of research. It's built off of research some science. It's old. It's been around a long time. No, I didn't invent it myself. I didn't invent it myself. I depend on smart people to help make me smart and so that I can help you to become smart and share their resources with you. So today I want to share that with you. It's a Myers-Briggs research. You know, you can jump on the internet to, and you can research Myers-Briggs personality types, Myers-Briggs personality tests. You can find the free version, Myers-Briggs personality test, the free version. Listen, 
I've got a version. My version is I've got the official version. It's good. It's better than any computer generated test that I'm aware of. It's awesome. You know, you, you send me an email, a link or something. Maybe I'll put a link down there that'll help you get to it. You know, but I, I do it the old fashioned way. I'm old fashioned when it comes to success. I, I'm old fashioned. I like success. I like tradition, a little bit of tradition, but I like to do things. I like to be innovative. But one of the things I know is that we, we do that myers brick test. It's going to give us a good idea what some of your personality traits are. It's going to give us a good idea what some of your natural gifts, talents, and abilities are. The ones that God gave you to achieve greatness and to be great, to be your best, and to become your best. And he also gave you those abilities so that you could make your way here on earth. So that you could make a fortune and become the person that you were born to be. <laughs> it's almost amazing. Occasionally I'm wondering, why don't they just teach us this stuff in school, right? Why do they make us go to school for all those years? But by the time we're done with school, we really still don't know who we are. Most people don't have any idea what their natural gifts, talents, and abilities are. They, they, they don't have any idea. They, they're clueless. You know, it just makes so much sense if we, if they, if, you know, if they taught us that in school. It would make a lot of sense. But hey, they didn't do it, so I'm going to do it. I'm going to give you the Myers-Briggs. I'm going to give you access to the Myers-Briggs. Hey, you can jump on Google, whatever, get that test take the Myers-Briggs, you know, the computerized tests aren't as good. When I do them, I always do them in a three-step process. We always do the computerized test, we do a self-assessment, and then we do assessment one-on-one with, with yourself, you and me, or you and one of the coaches or one of the members of my team, you know, to really figure that thing out and figure out what your natural gifts, talents, and abilities are and to figure out what it is that you desire, what it is that you want. Because that old saying is true. And I can't recall who said it right now, but you've probably heard it before. But it's the one people often say, gurus and professionals, often they say, hey, listen, if you can tell me what it is that you want, Zig Ziglar said it best. Zig Ziglar was, if you can tell me what you want, I can tell you how to get it. But the reason most people never get what they want, is simple. They never really put a lot of thought into it. And then the ones who have thought about it, they thought about what it, what it is that they want, but once they figure out what it is they want, they start to, in the back of their mind, right back in here, they start to make up excuses. They start to buy into society. And society has a great, society does a great job of telling you what you can't do, who you can't be, what you can't have, who you can't love, who you can't marry. Society puts more limitations on people than Probably the government. The only person I know that puts more limitations on people in the society, actually, the, the only person, the only group of people that I know that put more limitations on, on, on more limitations on people is the government. The government has more rules and regulations than you could swing a hammer at. You could swing a hammer for days and there'd still be government rules and regulations. You know, I was just talking to a friend a few minutes ago. We're talking about why people really can't succeed, especially in the black community. Why people are having such a hard time in the black community. If you want to know why people don't succeed in the black community, government. <laughs> it's simple. It's the government. The government has more rules and regulate. The government has volumes and books and books and books and books full of nothing but rules and rules. Could you imagine sitting down on a Friday evening to play like, like a game of Nop a Monopoly or something? And before you could play the game of Monopoly and win the game and be successful, you had to go through volume after volume after volume of books. And you had to go through years of research. And then you had to decipher the, the legalese that is written in to play the game and play the game effectively to win. If you had to do all that, you wouldn't even play the game. Most people would, most people would say, screw this. These rules are ridiculous. They say the rules are ridiculous, and before you know it, they start making up their own rules. And they say, you know what, this seems, this seems like the right thing to do, so this is what we're going to do. Screw those rules, let's play by these rules. Let's play by the house rules. You know, growing up as a kid, everybody played Monopoly by the house rules. I don't think anybody played by the real rules. That is until I met some people. I met some people. And they started playing, and man, were they good. They were successful. They were buying up hotels. They were buying up all the properties. They were building houses. And I'm like, you guys got to be cheating. They did some stuff that I was like, you got to be cheating. And they said, no, we cheating. They pulled the rule book out. They said, here goes the rules right here. And in Monopoly, it was only like two pages of rules. We read the rules. I was like, wow. 
And guess what happened once I discovered the rules? Once I discovered the rules, I could play the game. And not only could I play the game, I could win the game every time. That's how life is supposed to be. Life is supposed to have a few rules. I remember back in the, in the biblical days, you know, the, the biblical guys, man, they had a few rules. They had the Ten Commandments, or is it the Twelve Commandments? Whatever it is, you know what it is. If, if, you, if I got it wrong, if it's not the Ten Commandments or the Twelve Commandments, do a Google search for the Ten Commandments and then read them. Those were the basic rules of the game. Those were the basic rules of the game. If you want to win the game, learn the basic rules. You want to know why most people aren't successful? Most people aren't successful because they don't know the rules of the game. Makes sense. They don't know the rules of the game. The government, you know, if I flip my camera around, I could point over to Washington, D.C. over there. I could tell you over there in the government, they're supposed to be making these rules and laws. And they got, man, they got buildings so big, they don't even, they got, they got a library. The Library of Congress over there. It's so big. It's got more books on law than you'd ever imagine in your entire life. And you and I put together, we could spend the rest of our life trying to learn all those laws and all those rules and we'll never be successful. We need a government with few laws. Give me something like the, the Ten Commandments or Twelve Commandments, whatever it's called. Give me something like that. You know, give me something like the Monopoly rules. Two pages. Two pages on the Monopoly rules. I can read that, figure out all the rules. I know exactly how fast to drive my car. I know exactly how many times to pass go before I collect my money. I know exactly what it takes to buy a house. I know exactly what it takes to become a millionaire, a billionaire. Put it two pages they did in the Monopoly. Two pages. Too many rules. A lot of people say, go vote. They say, get out the vote. Get out the vote. Go vote. You get out the vote, you go vote, and all they do is they create more rules to keep you down. But hey, if you grew up in the hood, you already know that the government keeps people down. <laughs> the hood. Grew up in the hood, you already know the government keeps people down, keeps people poor. Then when you make some money, they take your money. That's just what they do. But here's the deal. What I have discovered is that the more money you make, yeah, the more they take. But the more you make, it don't even make a difference anymore. It don't make a difference. The more money you make, it don't make as much a difference as it used to. You see, when you're not making a lot, they take a, they take a lot. They still take a, they take a lot. They always talk about they're going to tax the rich. Man, the rich got lawyers. They got lawyers. They got legal teams. They got defense attorneys. Man, the rich don't. The rich are only going to pay their fair share. And they're going to make sure that they're only paying their fair share. Do they pay? Yeah, they pay. If any politician ever jumps up on, on the stage and tells you that, he, the rich don't pay their fair share. Do not vote for him. He is a liar. Don't vote for him. He is a liar. If a rich person has a car, they're paying taxes on that car. They went to the store to buy that car, they pay taxes. They go to the store to buy bread and butter, they're paying taxes. They get milk, they're paying taxes. So they get their money. Your job, though, is to be smart and make sure you only pay them nothing more, nothing less. Nothing more nothing less but here's the deal if you're really gonna be successful the thing you have to do is you have to figure out what it is that you want you have to figure out what it is that you really desire what are you willing to commit your life to what are you willing to commit your life to doing something that's gonna bring you extreme happiness you know and it's so simple because God the universe whichever you like to call it has already empowered you with the natural gifts talents and abilities that you need to succeed You've probably heard me say that before. You've probably heard other people say that before. You've probably heard them say that you have been given everything you need to succeed. Only thing is they didn't tell, they didn't, they didn't explain it to you and really let you understand what that meant. But you've been given everything you needed to, see, to succeed. And what you really have to do is you have to be willing now to step away from the crowd. You have to be willing to step away from the crowd, go out there and get what it is that you desire. Go out there and get what it is that you want. But before you do that, make sure it is you know what you want. Hey, I just wanted to share that with you today. I just wanted to jump on here. It's Wednesday. So I wanted to share that with you. It's a beautiful day out here. I get to sit out here on the side of the water because at some point in life, I knew what it was that I wanted. I knew what it was that I wanted. And I reached in my back pocket. I pulled out a little notepad. Put out a little notepad and I wrote, that, wrote down exactly what I wanted for my family, for myself, for my business, for my bank account, for my finances. For my investments I wrote it all down I wrote it all down and then 
I connected with some people who helped me to see things in a way that I had never seen them before, helped me to understand things in a way that I had never understood them before. You know, I, I grew up, I grew up on the other side of town. <laughs> you know, and our rules, our laws were a whole lot different. But I met some people who taught me some things that I would love to share with you. Because I know if you do what I did, you're probably more talented and gifted than I am. And if I could have any success with it, if my family has been successful, then what I know is that your family could be three, four, five, maybe ten times as successful. You just need the right people on your team. That's why I'm here. The right people for your team. The right person to serve as an advisor, mentors, coaches, trusted advisors, mentors, and coaches. People who can keep your confidentiality and help you get what it is that you want. And explain this to you a little bit more in detail. You know, five, ten minute video, I can tell you, hey, write down what you want. But most people won't do it and most people won't understand. Most people are going to click, click like. They're going to click love and say, hey, that's a great video. And I'll meet you again in a year after the video is released. And you're still struggling. Figure out what you want. Take the next step. Press one of them buttons below, and let's talk. It's Wednesday. Hey, next week, I'm going to talk to you. Next week, we're going to talk about faith. Either we're going to talk about faith, or we're going to talk about this other magical thing. This other magical thing is called persistence. So either faith or persistence what we're going to talk about next Wednesday. I'm not sure what it is, but hey, look for me. Join me, and let's do it. Have an awesome weekend. Ha <laughs> ha, yeah, baby. Wednesday, wisdom and leadership.